bless you, Jesus. So let's go over to the Lamb of God. Lord, you can put your hands wherever you are. Say, glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's time to give Him glory. Lord, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Lamb of God that was slain for you and I. We 
give you praise today. We give you glory. Somebody say glory. Just
you to my Lord your neighbor. And they're not praising him, you do it anyway. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God deserves all the glory right now. All the honor and all the praise right now. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. If you can stand right now, won't you stand? Glory, hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Almighty God. Just lift your hand to the Almighty God right now. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we give you
we love you, Lord. You know the heart of me. He wasn't in the wind. Nor was he in the fire. Nor was he in the shaking rock. But there was a small, still voice. And that small, still voice wants to talk to us this morning. He wants to speak to your spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. We usher the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. We usher your sweetness. We usher your sweetness. Thank you, praise him. Let's give a hand of praise to our praise team right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, be worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalms 37. We'll be reading verses 1 through 14. Thank you so very much, Pastor Sandra. Little Macho back there. <laughs> yes, Ezekiel chapter 37. You have it on your papers. We also have it on the screen. We'll be reading verses 1 through 14. Let us read. The power of the Lord came over me. The Lord brought me out by his spirit and put me down in the middle of a valley. The valley was filled with bones. He led me all around them. I saw that there were very many bones at the bottom of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, only you know, Almighty Lord. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones. Tell them, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Almighty Lord says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put ligaments on you, place muscles on you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will live, then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. While I was prophesying, suddenly there was a rattling noise, and the bones came together, one bone attaching itself to another. As I looked, I saw that the ligaments were on them, muscles were on them, skin covered them, yet there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, tell the breath, this is what the Almighty Lord says, come from the four winds, breathe, and the breath, and breathe on these people who were healed so that they would live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. Then they came to life and stood on their feet. There were enough of them to form a very large army. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, all of the people of Israel are like these bones. The people say, Our bones are dry. Our hope has vanished. We are completely destroyed. So prophesy. Tell them, This is what the Almighty Lord says. My people, I will open your graves and take you out of them. I will bring to Israel. Then my people, you will know that I am the Lord, because I will open your graves and bring you out of your graves. 
I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we thank and praise and love you. We glorify your name. We thank you so very much for this word that you're giving today, even through your servant. Lord, we thank you that it will be spirit and life, and it will speak to the various needs of not only of this congregation and not only those on the airways, but to all that will listen around the world. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for dry bones being right now reactivated, regenerated, and Lord, causing life to come. And we speak life today. Yes, we speak life to every situation, every circumstance, every person. And we thank you right now that it will be all of you and none of me. And Lord, right now, the name of Jesus, that you will get all the glory, honor, praise. We saturate this, uh, this uh, atmosphere with expectation and anointing. And we thank you for Holy Ghost, not only for coming in, but for abiding. And we praise and thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So the name of today's message is I Speak Life. Repeat after me. I, I speak, speak life. life. So, so what we must understand, even as we were uh, reading a very familiar passage in Ezekiel, uh, the story of the dry bones, we've got to understand that whenever God is taking you to a new place, Often it is a new situation which we haven't been in before. Yes. And he's taking us in a new direction and we don't even understand all the ramification of that place that he's taking us to. So many times in Christianity, we act like the light comes on when everything's positive. But do you know in electricity where the light comes on, there's a positive and a negative, negative connection? There's a positive and a, ne connect, and a negative connection. And if you have either one missing, then the light won't come on. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Well, when does that light of Jesus Christ come on? It comes on when there's a positive and a negative. As a matter of fact, most of you didn't come to Christ when everything was good. You didn't come to Christ when everything was great. You came to try Christ because Christ there was trouble going on. There was some kind of trouble that ran you to God. Some of you played games like I did. I played a game with God where I said, Lord, if you'll get me out of this, I swear for God next time. I swear for God, you, you won't have to worry about me. I'll be yours forever. But as soon as I got out of the trouble, my, my statement changed. Because God had to understand who I was. That, that, you know, the parties couldn't quit right now because, you know, who I was. And the drinking couldn't quit right now. The drugs couldn't quit right now because of who I was. And then all of a sudden, the situation got so bad that the, uh, the, 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 all that stuff seemed minimal to what, what God was doing in my life. And so it was negative circumstance that drew me to God. But when I when the negative drew me to the positive, the light turned on. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we, we're thinking in Christ, man, I'm tired of all this negative. But let me tell you what, the negative when it's hooked up to Christ is going to become a positive and the light is going to come on. You know, we look and look at the scripture like a lot of times that says weeping men do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I want you to know morning is not a time of day. It's a time when the light flips on and we determine that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the light of the world. And that's what I need. And he's what I need in order to be great in the kingdom of God and among men and women. So it's important that we know when we're talking, we speak in life, we need to know what life is all about. So we think life a lot of times is things. But have you noticed that the people with a lot of things often are the most miserable people they are? If you don't, if you just have things, then it's not going to please you. Even if you have a big family, you know, a big family, some of the fightingest family there is. So if a big family meant that you would have peace and love and joy, big families wouldn't be fighting. You know, I, I remember growing up with these big families and you were always just nervous when you got on the wrong tie with them because you're going to fight one, you're going to fight all ten of them. And then and you, you just didn't want, but, but that doesn't bring peace. Not things, not people, not family, none of that. 
People say, well, if I get married, I'll be happy. But boy, you know, there are people that say, get the Lord, Lord, get them. I want to get married, I want to get married, they get married, then they say, give them back, give them back, give them back. Well, you know, it ain't in marriage. It ain't none of that stuff. Money won't satisfy you. Nothing but Jesus Christ. So that's all one source of life. And John 10 and 10, what does Jesus say? He says, what, what does he say, Jesus said? He says, the thief coming not but the what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have what? Life and have it more abundantly. He says on John 14 and 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. There's only one source of life, and it's Jesus Christ. So when we're speaking life, we're speaking Christ. Can somebody say that? When we're speaking life, we're speaking Christ. When we're speaking life, we're speaking Christ. So, therefore, if I have a negative situation and I'm speaking life to it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that I'm just saying words. Because we got this thing about name it, claim it, say it, obey it, and it'll happen and all this. But I want you to know before anything begins to change supernaturally, and I'm on not on the notes. Some of you are looking at the notes and trying to figure out I'm not on the notes yet, but I'll be on there in a few minutes. But some of you are trying to figure out and say, wait just a minute now. They told me about this way that what I speak is going to happen. Uh, let, me, let me explain something. If you're speaking, your words does not matter unless the source has the authority in which for your words to come to pass. So if the source is not a legitimate authority, have you ever seen people that go around trying to play cop? They have on a uniform, they have the flashing lights, all of that, but they're not real cops. They, they have no authority really. They think like they have it, but they don't have it. And so we have Christians today, and I don't know if they're Christians, but they have fake authority. They name and claim it by doing and saying what other folks say. But their source isn't God, their source is flesh. Their source is other things besides God itself. Their source is repetition, what I heard somebody else say. But when you have a personal relationship with God, you have to understand your source is what matters. So when I'm speaking a word, I'm speaking a word when it comes to the word of God. I'm speaking out of the life of Jesus. What did Jesus he, he lets us know in the beginning was the word, the word was God and the word was with God. So the word was Jesus Christ. Now that word that God sent was a word that gave us right now an indication of how much God loves us because our word expressed uh, really what we mean. So when God sent Jesus according to John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who is a believer should not perish but have everlasting life. So therefore God sent a word to us in the form of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ said I love you so much that I'm sending the best that I can. So when God sends a word to us, he's sending from the source of God, he's sending God, and he's really letting us know that when we speak life, we're speaking the, the God himself. We're speaking God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all at the same time. So our words have to be backed by the sword. Now, it's not only the source, but it's also when we're talking about the motive of the sword. What is God's motive for, speak, for us speaking a word? The motive is love. Everything about God is love. So when we're speaking life to a situation or a circumstance, we've got to know that we are backed by the most powerful, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnipotent God there is. And when we're speaking life to a situation, we've got to understand that there's some stuff that's death in my life, but I've got to speak life to it right now. Sometimes I gotta speak life to my my just bedazzled mind, my my mind that needs to be restored recalculate, revamp. I need to speak to that and I need to speak life to it. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be accepted in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, right now, I feel like right now in the name of Jesus that if I don't get any help, my mind is going to go straight 
the hell with, but no, I don't know about you, but I say that we need to know that there's some things we need to speak life to right now. And so when he's talking about the valley of dry bones, we're going to go here and we're going to see how God inundated the prophet to say the word that would raise up dry bones. And so there are some dry spots in your life that God needs to revamp. Yes. You've got to know when to speak life. You've got to know where to speak life. Somebody asked me in the office this morning, are you going to preach on 5782? I said, well, it's not my time to preach on it. I said, I wouldn't mind, but I'm not just going to preach a word just to preach a word. I don't care if it is the cool thing to do. I don't care if it is the thing that everybody else do. If God don't speak it, I'm not going to speak it. But but everybody else, I'm not saying everybody else is wrong. What I'm saying is this. There's a word for this house right yeah. now. And that's the word I'm going to speak because yeah. that's the word that's going to bring spirit and life to each and every one of us. Some of us get so in tune with the internet and all that, and these people are saying this and that, but what is God saying to you? There's a word on the inside of you that God wants to speak, and so that's what you speak that brings life to your situation. We have too many people that are trying to speak life to other people's situation with what, what is life for your situation right now. See, there's a time when, when there's a word for you that you're trying to speak off on everybody else. You know what I had to do as a preacher? Every time I hear a word, I think about preaching. I think about preaching to you. Until God said, well, why don't you preach to yourself first? All right now. I said, oh God, do I have to do that? Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. Because the word, first word, got to come to you. You can't be cussing around here and then telling folk, you know, you ought to stop cussing because God is a good God and you ought to be cussing, you go home cuss your wife out. Wow. You can't do that. You got to move. And then you mess up, just ask God to forgive you. And then good them. But God, I don't want to be doing what I accept. I, I want to go before you as never before. So when the Lord is moving you higher, he moves you in uncomfortable places, in uncomfortable situations, because God is saying, you've seen that before. If I let you do it this way, what you're going to do is you're going to draw on what you knew. But I'm going to take you away that you haven't been before, and you're going to be so desperate right now, you don't know what to do. See, most of us in here, not all of us, are in situations that we don't know how we're going to handle. <laughs> How, how am I going to handle this situation right here? I, I, I don't know what else to do. I, I've been hurting for so long. I've been a little ne neglected, offended for so long. And I don't know how to handle this situation. The thing is, God's saying, oh, that's a negative. But let me show you the positive. The positive is when you connect with Jesus proportionally to the negative that's going on, then God will really begin to move in your circumstance. What do you mean, uh, Pastor pro uh, proportionally? See, some people are in real trouble. And they doing these, now I lay me down to sleep prayers. Mm -hmm. But if, in proportion, that ain't, that's not going to get you out of the trouble you're in. See, see, you need to be some Holy Ghost and fire prayer. All you right. need to go down on your knees prayer. You need to do some prayer that calls heaven and earth to stand up and maybe even some fasting for the trouble that you're in. And God is saying, I want you to speak life this morning. Even in our thought life right now. I got people in here that just zoned out. You zoned out. And God is saying, this is the word for you today. And you're zoned out. And when you've been, how are you going to get your deliverance? Because the word here is the word for you today. Amen? Amen. So let's look at the journey when we're talking about Ezekiel 37. The journey to making dry bones live. And so we got some dry bones in here that need to live. First of all, there's the preparation. Somebody said preparation. Preparation. And the way it is the action or process of making ready for being made or being made ready to use for consideration. So God prepared Ezekiel for his duty by giving him a visionary tour of the scene which would justify his ministry. Now, how many dreamers we have in here? How many of you had dream and you had vision that God showed you what you needed to do? Some of you are lying. But anyway, you have dreams and visions that, that God has shown you 
what you need to do. What the, uh, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And there was one testimony, even our catechism class. I recommend it to everybody. But there was one that said, you know, uh, you know, I had a dream vision, just talking about the dream and the vision and how you sometimes lose track of it. You lose track because when you're five, six, and seven, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a pastor, a preacher. But then when you get 16, well, I, I'll just work, uh, I'll work part time. I'll just work anywhere. I don't care. But, but the thing is, uh, somewhere along the way, somebody took some dream away from you. Sometimes we have a big dream and we get disappointed because they don't turn out in the timeless that we thought or the time frame we thought. And some of us say, well, I'm too old to do it now. But if you use Moses at 80, I don't think nobody in here is 80 years old yet. He can use you at whatever age you are. I'm talking about beginning to speak. So there's preparation that happened right now. And so God is getting uh, right now Ezekiel ready for what he's about to do in his life. And I want you to know God is giving, getting some of you ready. You said, not me. Not me. Uh, couldn't be me. Because Right now, I'm not feeling it. Right now, I got so much stuff going on the inside of me, not like God, that God can't do it. Well, that's the, that's the perfect time that God can do it. Because he's going to bless you according to the proportion of what you're going through. Remember the lady that came and had did all this stuff? And God said, who was, Jesus said, we who the Lord has forgiven much, that person loves much. Listen here, you've got to know that God's going to use you no matter what's going on. If you just begin to connect to Jesus, just begin to say stuff like, God, I thank you right now that I'm forgiven of my sin. I thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus that you are cleansed by the blood and no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. I thank you, God, right now. It doesn't look like it's going to be all right, but I know it's going to be all right because of who you are. And when we begin to lean on Jesus, let me tell you what, dear Lisa, you know I have children and grandchildren that come and lean on my shoulder. Man, I, I, they don't even have to ask for that. And I just, I just give it to them because they leaning on my shoulder. And you know, I'm, you know how. And, and you listen, with men, man, men just love to be depended on. I tell you what, lead on. I tell you what, they love to do that, and they act like they don't, but they love to be depended on. You know, and you can get everything out of them if you would just act like they're a superhero. Because men want to be superheroes. We ain't always superhero, but we want to be superhero. I know we got women now that know how to fix the toast to do all that stuff too. But 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 wait just a minute, man. If you ever get want a man to feel just super, you go and ask baby, I don't know how to fix this toast. Can you do it? The man chest pump up, his, his arm go pop out, everything else, and he begins to fix it. Why? Because he's a superhero right now. And God is saying that we need to really get in gear for what God is doing through us. He just wants us more. We may cry a lot about everybody calling on us, but let nobody call on us right now. Wow. Which, oh my God, let nobody call on us. What happened? So, uh, so it's not only the preparation for the vision, because God is preparing some of you. Yeah. He's really preparing. But you got to lose some feelings along the way. You got to die along the way. God's word said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We got to die some along the way. And so when you die, it means that it ain't it don't feel good. You know, you, you might spot off some stuff while dying. You may think of some dreams and stuff. You might think of another person being murdered while you're going through. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you can't do that. Now. You know, I, no, you can't think of that way, man. Yeah, yeah, you, you can think of that way. But you can't do it because God is on your side. Amen? Amen. So not only thinking about the preparation, but the venture. It's an adventure. Look at what the word venture means. A risky or daring journey or undertaking. Uh, let's let's uh, look at Psalms 37 and 1. Let's start reading right there. Go ahead. The hand. The hand of the Lord carried me out, set me down in the midst of the valley, full of bones. Amen. So it does seem sometimes like when God is getting ready to use you, he'll set you in the midst of bones. Uh, bones that are not even connected. He didn't say skeleton, did he? He said bones. 
So which means that they were scattered, they were all apart, and you didn't know that the hip bone was connected to the leg bone, the leg bone to the foot bone. You didn't know what bone was connected to what bone. And sometimes your circumstances will seem like, man, I don't know what in the world is going on. Some of you got other words in there, but I don't know what in the world is going on. What, what, why is it that things don't connect? Why is it that I was up last week and I'm down this week? Why is it I'm in the valley more than I'm on the mountaintop? Why is that? Because God is trying to get you to lean and depend on him. He's trying to say that you see that you are not that great, that I'm not that great, that he is. And when he gets you to that point, then man, the windows of heaven are open. And listen here, he'll begin to bless as never before. And you say, how long? Well, as long as it takes for you to be quiet when he say be quiet, okay? That may be a, no, okay, that may be a light, okay. So, 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 <laughs> uh, the venture is a risky or daring journey or undertaking. That's the venture. So, uh, let's read that, uh, 37 and 1. It says, the hand of the Lord carried me out, set me down in the midst of a valley full of bones. So uh, Ezekiel had a visionary venture. God moved him by a vision to a scene which it would inspire the image that he desired. Let's look at the vision. The vision. The vision is the faculty or state of being able to see. Now we're not talking about seeing that we're being able to see through God's eyes. To be able to see when a tribulation or that is coming, that God is in the midst of it. What does Romans 5 and 3 starts out with tribulation working page to page experience, experience hope and hope making not a shame. Your tribulation is going to make the hope that make not a shame come to pass. What does that mean? That of the things you've been hoping for and dreaming for is going to come to pass as you begin to right now rely on God. Because listen, it's so funny about some of us. Uh, We'll preach to other folks so good. God yeah. will do it. God, God's going to do it. Don't worry. God's going to take it. But, but when it comes to your own situation, we, we know it a little while. But, but after a while, God, when are you coming? How are you coming? Lord, you both been here yesterday. But the thing is, we're supposed to be preaching the same thing to us that we're preaching to them right now. Glory, hallelujah. I've been in some cases where when I had my first surgery, I was thinking, I used to think all them Dr. Pitch, why don't them fools have surgery? They, they just fool. Why don't they go get on have surgery? They don't mean take all that crying and taking an hour on a picture to determine you're gonna have surgery. But when I had my first one, you would have thought I was a baby. What? They don't cut who? Well, when you sure you got the right doctor, the right nurse, everything, it changed when it was me. Because I was just saying, I'm praying for you. And then God's going to make everything all right. But you got to watch out when it turn around and it's you. And you, you, you. And sometimes they don't like to put you fully awake when they doing the surgery. You see that knife going, and the don't Lord have messing on shoving no needle, big needle or whatever. Man. You know, you, you change your whole image of stuff. You get serious when people have surgery. You didn't just say, I'm going to pray for you and then forget about it. No, I'm praying for you. And then you throw something like a hospital or you want something in there that's going to cause God to get victory out of them. Amen? So, let's read, read this. Uh, Psalm Ezekiel 35 and 2. Let's read it. So, what? Valley full of bones. Very many in open valley and low. They, they were, were very, very dry. dry. What kind of bones were they? Were what? Very yeah. dry. What were they? Yeah. Very dry. So in very dry bones, you all know how the very dry bones is. You eat them chicken bones and you leave them out on the stove for two or three days. They crack open. Everything in the middle of them. Bone dry and everything else. You know, and, and some people just just break them over and eat the from in the bone. But 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 <laughs> but anyway, you know, it said the bones were very dry. The bones very dry represent stuff that's beyond repair. Stuff that is impossible to repair. Yes. But guess who's the God of the impossible right now? Our God is the God of the impossible. So when we're around here talking about I give up, uh, you know, I just don't believe God can't do nothing with this situation. Think about your God. You say, oh, well, I said, you'll never have to deal with that. 
All the time. All the time. And when I have to deal with it, I have to go to God. And sometimes I don't get a break in a, 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 yes. a day. Yes. Sometimes in two or three days. Because what God wants you to do is be touched with the feelings of somebody else's infirmity. Yes. So when somebody comes to you and their situation impossible, dry bones, all that, you won't just say, well, all you need to do is pray. You'll say, well, just know, I'm going to war with you. I'm going to war with you. I'm going to be in here with you. We're going to fight. Everyone in here needs somebody that they can depend on in order to pray with when times get rough. Yeah. You need another saint of God. People are saying, I can do it all by myself. That's why people are committing suicide out there like I don't know what. When they think they can do it all by themselves, we were never meant to be alone. That's why God made Eve. Yeah. You know, Adam was by himself. And he named all the animals. He said, no, I'm fit. But then he made Eve. And he said, oh, man, that's it. You understand, man was not meant to be alone. Woman was not meant to be alone. I'm not talking about marriage. All the, I'm talking about have some kind of friend you can talk to. And, and have them where they can, you can just vent sometimes when you know you're wrong. You just spouting off at the mouth. And they just listen. They ain't agreeing with it. But they letting you spout. Amen. And by the time you get through spouting, you already know you're wrong if you're a child of God and under the right word. You are there spouting, oh, I don't believe God won't do it. He just, he will never come through for me and all that. And, and you are convicting your own heart. We got to be careful because when we start that and we look at our joy not being filled, why is our joy not being fulfilled? Because God said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit right now, all know, he knows is God can, God will, and God has. And so you have to be careful when you start spewing the negative stuff that you don't interfere with what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life because he wants to take you to higher height. Man, I'm telling you, when you're going really high, glory, hallelujah, you're going to experience some incredible lows. Uh, listen here. I, I, I want you to know when God is taking you incredible high, high you're going to reach some incredible lows. And it's going to be like, wow, God, I must not be doing everything right. Yeah. I, there must be something wrong with me. There's something going on. But the fact is that sometimes God is just bragging on you like he bragged on Job. And you know what? When Job finished up, God, God said, whoa, 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 I'm going to bless him with double everything. Why? Because he went through. And we will need to know when you're speaking life, you need to speak life to work right now. Yes. You need to speak life to it. What do you mean speak life to it? That means worry more? No. We, we said in the beginning that life with Jesus Christ. When I speak right now life to worry, it means that I cast all my cares upon him yes. for he careth for me. We're in a worried world right now. We got a world that's right now so deep in despair, they don't even know how to hope again. But when I begin to speak life, not only to their situation, but to mine, I begin to have the weight to lift off my shoulders. Everybody that needs the weight, lift off your shoulders. I want you to just raise your hand right now. Whatever weight is lifted. Now, almost everyone in here right now is lifting their hands because there's a weight that we need lifted off our shoulders right now. So the enemy's main way is to distract us so we never hear. You never hear this word. Some of you at my experience said last time I said something about not seeing a tree on the way to church right now. And somebody told me, man, you were talking to me. And I believe I'm talking to others that you didn't see a tree right now. And I'm just remembering I didn't see a tree this morning. My God. Man, you, you didn't see a tree because you were so concerned about getting wherever or getting away from or being so worried about circumstances that you just didn't see the tree. There was all kind of things running. But we need to experience the tree. God made them. Experience the sky. God made it. Experience right now the breathing of the breath because God made it. Lord, tell somebody I speak life right now. Glory, hallelujah, I speak life right now. I speak life. Glory, hallelujah. Life. The next one is the vitality right now. The vitality. Vitality is the state of being strong and active and energized right now. Yes. And he said in this, he said, can these bones live? Oh Lord, thou knowest. And he's, he's referring back to God. And he said, these bones are dry and very dry. But he said, 
Lord, can these bones live? We ask God that question sometimes when we say, God, there's nothing can be done about this situation. Wow. But we forget that he's omnipotent, omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everything. And when God decides to step in, then that means that the situation can change right now. I don't care. Be behind on your bill right now in the name of Jesus. Be sick in your body right now in the name of Jesus. We decreed it over our people that we walk in divine health right now. Yeah. We decreed it over our people that they're going to pray and be prayer warriors right now. Yeah. That we won't lose everything, but we're going to gain right now in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now in the yeah. name of Jesus, but you may be behind, but God never was right now. He's the God that sees the end from the beginning right now. He already sees you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Yeah. I'm telling you what, the power of God. So what is happening with this vitality? When we look at a whole earth now, look at all that's happening with coronavirus. What is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to steal your breath away. Oh, Got us on yeah. oxygen. Ah. Got us right now can't breathe right. Got us right now in the house. too many people in the hospital with breath and lack of breath. And God is saying, I give you vitality when you begin to speak life right now. Don't speak death over you. I don't speak right now. That if I go in the hospital right now, I'm going to die there. Don't speak if they go in the hospital, they're going to die there. Don't speak right now if I'm taken out by this coronavirus. It cannot take you out unless you allow it and you speak it right now. But I decree life over everyone in here. We just create life for our families right now. Life. I don't care if they're in there right now. I just need life right now. We don't give up on people of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Why haven't we been touched in here? It's because of God right now. Why do we have to go to the be on the breath machine? Because of God right now. We believe in God in here. I'm not believing in you. Shoot, believe in you. Shoot, if I get coronavirus, you will be running as fast as possible. Let me cough too much up here. This place is clear. I'm not believing, believing in you. I'm believing in the Almighty God right now. Glory, hallelujah. I love you, Pastor. I love you. I love you. Let me go to coffee too much. <laughs> Missing in action. <laughs> Brother Tim always confessing how much he loves me, but let me cough too much. He wants you so. See the question here <laughs> Can these bones live right now Is a question that we ask Regarding our circumstances But I want you to know That we are people of life Yes Lord Because we're people of Jesus And any bones that are dead Can live If they are for the purpose of God Let's look at the precept The precept is a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. Mm. After the revelation comes, responsibility. Ezekiel is given a special vision to prepare him for service. See, we can't really have what we call a revelation unless we get responsibility. Mm. You're supposed to dream a dream and then carry it out. Mm. Most of you all are dreaming a dream and then pack it in on a suitcase. And then put it under the bed. Yep. But God's not going to allow that in these times, you all. We're going to have to pull out those suitcases and those dreams. And we're going to have to begin to dream again. Yes. In, ser in the service in the precept. That's what we do in the precept. The responsibility. He said here. Here's God. He said prophesy upon these bones. So prophesy upon these bones is what God is a telling Ezekiel. Ezekiel's service consists of preaching to a bunch of dry bones. Sometimes as a pastor, we feel that that's a condition that we're preaching to dry bones. Because what people want to do is they want the next best thing. They want peanut butter and jelly. 
<laughs> More jelly than peanut butter, probably. But but the thing is that you have to stand flat footed and say what God wants you to say yes. each and every time so that the people can get what we call a foundation. One of the greatest problems in the church today is the foundations are being uprooted and the main foundation is Jesus Christ. Yes. So you can talk about prosperity. You can talk about miracles and signs and wonders. You can talk about all those. But when it comes to Jesus, not him. Mm -hmm. I want you to realize something. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they experienced miracles and signs and wonders. They experienced great miracles and signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to change their clothes for 40 years. Wow. They ate what they ate didn't have to farm, didn't have to do anything for 40 years. Wow. They had all of that a miracle. But that was in the, when they were in the wilderness. That was the time they were babies. Mm -hmm. That was the time when they were letting God take care of them. Mm -hmm. But when they moved to the promised land, the miracles stopped. Mm -hmm. And in the promised land, they had to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. See, what you, some of us have moved from is from the wilderness to the promised land. And now we've got to operate by faith. The reason that many had to die over there is because even when it comes to the, the land or the promised land, the thing is that we've got to know the promised land had giants in it. Now, if you're going to fight giants, you've got to have faith. And the giants in your life are the things that you overcome or whatever. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the sermon, let's talk about the sermon. A sermon is a talk on a religious or moral subject in the precept. And we said precept, responsibility. What's responsibility? Is that hear the word of the Lord, you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, put breath in you. Two things can be said about this sermon. First, the authority of the sermon. Hear the word of the Lord. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to not only listen, we've got to hear. And it says, and the only message that will do any good is the message that comes from the word of God, such as a, a, a message that is authoritative. Every word that we speak from the word of God must be authoritative. What, what does it mean? That it must come from a vessel that's subjected to Christ, a vessel right now that knows God personally and that desires God and has power with God, okay? And then, not only that, when it comes to authoritative, uh, the second, the anticipation from the sermon, we shall live. This is a great encouragement to those represented by the bone. So, not only the authoritative word, but the fact that you shall live means that now that you hear the word, you should and I should be walking in expectation that God is going to do the impossible. I want you to get in mind some impossible things that you want God to do for you. I want you to get in mind that they're, they're impossible to you right now. But begin to get them in mind and begin to say, God, you're going to do it. You're going to do it because I cannot. You're going to do it. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, don't leave out of here without just say, Lord, I thank you for doing the miracle I need you to do. Okay, now let's say it with expectation. Lord, I thank you. And some of you still don't believe God's going to do that miracle. <laughs> Let's talk about the sequel. Uh, a sequel is a continuing story. Uh, how many of you remember the Rocket 1, Rocket 2, Rocket 3, Rocket 4, Rocket 5, Rocket 6? I think of just six of them, right? How many? Just six of them? Okay. Lorenzo has watched all of them. <laughs> and the Creed 2, okay. Okay. Ezekiel 37 and 6. He says, you shall know that I'm a, I am the Lord. The end result of this is honoring God. Let's look at the performance, number three. 
Performance is the action or process of carrying out or accomplishing an action, task, or function. And Ezekiel 37, uh, 37 verse 7 to 10, explain that. Ezekiel responded to his orders, to God's orders with excellence. Do you know that there are some people that respond to God half-heartedly? They don't respond to God with all of their heart. Uh, it, it, we have to respond to him with excellence, which means I'm going to do the very best that I know how. Uh, because we need to learn to hear the voice of God. And people say, oh man, God, had, I had not heard his voice with my ears. But God speaks to your spirit. Amen. And you're led by the spirit. Do you know what's going to happen in these last days? What's going to happen? God's going to speak more and more to you. And people that look like they are right. God's going to speak to you and say, you need to pray for them. Okay. And you know what? You're going to have the responsibility to pray for them. And, and sometimes we use, well, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't up on this. I, I, I got too much going on in me to pray for anybody. But remember, you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost is something else. Uh, even as I was, you, I don't know how many people ever been behind on their bills before. I believe I'm the only one in here. No, no I'm lying. I'm, I'm lying. I don't believe them. No. But, but <laughs> you all, they're really nice to be a payers now. The people call you for bills now. It used to be a time they call you on the phone, cuss you out, do everything. I mean, they were just really bad. You, they cuss you, call you at work, at home call you at one o'clock in the morning they didn't no, they just were rough. and so when they did it they 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 would do that to me at work and when they did it to me at work y'all i tell the people tell them i wasn't there i saved too i ain't there tell them i'm not here and it was a bad testimony because the folk don't work i was a witness and took for the law <laughs> But I asked, I asked God a question. I said, God, now, am I a hypocrite? I said, because when they call, I tell them first, I tell people I'm not there. And then I go out on the field that evening and I tell the people about how good God is, how God can do anything but fail. I, I tell them that and people get saved. They go out, I was a young saint, one or two years old in the Lord. And the, and the Holy Spirit just put it right. He said, listen, baby. When you answer them phones or get ready out the phone, you answer them in the flesh. That's your flesh. You're afraid. He said, but when you go out on the field, it's the Holy Ghost that's talking. It's He's talking. And all the Holy Ghost knows is God can, God has, and God will. And so I learned the adjustment that really, I wasn't a hypocrite, but God soon got all that out of me about it. Lying, because lying ain't right no matter what. And I began to tell the truth and answer the calls. And you know what was spectacular about it? When I answered the call, guess what? The people were trying to make a way in order for the, to, to make it good for me. So it's just about that. Okay. So the point. So uh, the conforming. Uh, conforming means to comply with rules, standards, and laws. And he said, so I prophesied as a command, as I was commanded, Ezekiel 37, 7. That is the only proper response a servant of the Lord can make. However, many prophesied preach not as God command, but as their congregation wants. When we're talking about prophesying to a thing, you've got to prophesy or say what God says. You've got to speak life to the circumstance that so concerns you. We know sometimes we can get little things in our bodies and we begin to say what the world say rather than conforming to the image and likeness of God. We've got to say to our marriages, we've got to do it. To our relationships, we got to do it. We got to say what God says in relation to our financial situation. We got to say what God said. We got to conform to God's end. So here's the prophet Ezekiel. So he prophesied as God commanded. Let me ask you, how many of you have prophesied to the situation that you're facing right now? The miracle you need, the loved one you need healed, the loved one you need saved. How many of us are prophesying right now to the financial arena? How many of us are prophesying right now in the name of Jesus to the heart of our own heart that need to be changed? 
We need to prophesy. We need to speak life to those situations rather than conforming to the world's standard. And then look at the consequences. Consequences, a result or effect of an action or a condition. It says, and he says in 37 and 7, it says, there was a noise and a shaking bones came together. Ezekiel 37, 7. So sometimes it looks hopeless to preach God's message, but when the word is preached, it will accomplish what it is sent to do. So there's some shaking that's going on in the earth. There's some shaking that's going on in your house, in my house. There's some shaking that's going on in political arenas. There's some shaking that's going on in the church. Why is that shaking? When you're shaking, you're shaking off something that does not need to be there, where it can be pure and holy before God. I'm telling you, we need to speak life to the things that God has anointed us to speak to. The, conclude, the consequences are the conclusion. The end or finish of an event or process. Uh, there was no breath in them. And when there was no breath in the bones, the sinews came, the bones came together. All that the muscle came upon the bone, but there was no breath in it. And so it says there was no breath in them prophesying to the wind. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came unto them and they lived. Uh, and, that, and that wind they talk about is the Ruach of God. The breath of God, the same breath that he breathed in a man, yes. and man became a living soul. And so there is a breath and a breathing that happens when we begin to speak into situations, the thing that God would have us to speak. We begin to prophesy to the things and we begin to speak life instead of death. We begin to speak that right now, not only when we pray, because some people are valid prayer, but when it comes to listening and intaking the word, it does not saturate because I already know there's just, you know, same old thing. But however many times that I have to hear the word that's going to cause me to walk in deliverance, I want to hear it again and again so that I can be totally who God wants me to be. How do we develop muscle by continuous action? And the continuous action is on continually walking in the faith of God. I'm standing in the mirror, and I, I don't do this really, but I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be good by it. I didn't start. But standing in the mirror and reminding yourself who you are in the Lord. Yes. Prophesy to yourself right now. You know, prophesy to yourself, I'm getting younger. Oh my God. You getting younger and better? Oh my God, wait a minute, I'm getting smart. Glory, hallelujah. My, my family is changing. Begin to prophesy to yourself right now. I'm a world changer right now. And I'm changing the world for Jesus Christ. You and I need to begin to prophesy because right now God wants you to know the anointing that's on your life. Listen. You're so special that God made you unique right now. Yes, he made yes. you unique. And so when we're looking at uh, the Holy Spirit and we're looking at all he entails, why is the the most important word letter in the uh, word in the, um, in, in the vocabulary? D means there's only one. Yes. When you say the, it's only one. When I say the Holy Spirit or the living God, See, see, because every one of us is unique but the same, but, but let's take it personal. Let's take it out. When I say D, Mother Linda, do you think there's more than one of her? <laughs> Just one of a kind, right? Amen. But Timmy Thomas, only one. Oh, only only <laughs> one. Come on now. Lord. Just one right now. The Lorenzo. Oh, only one. Okay. See, there's only one right now in the name of Jesus and God wants you to know that you're the only, you're one and only and he's given you power and authority to speak life over every circumstance in your life. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Danielle, do you think there's more than one Danielle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she said, I was like a little prince with a hand nod. Nah, yeah, but, but that, that, that's one of her. Every one of you, that you are so beautifully made. Yes. And why is that? Because there are certain things about you that are just different right now. Because they're just different. That's different. I mean, it's just different from each and every one of you. 
I think of Desiree. Desiree here, and that's another. I'm talking about Desiree Dixon. When I think of her, I think of somebody that's ready to see funny in everything that you do wrong. But, but, but she, she okay. She okay. She good. We have learned to learn, learn to joke about that. But there's just just one. There's listen here. You are so unique that God wants you to start prophesying. Yes. But when things get rough, you begin to say stuff like, I prophesy to my own self. Yes. That right now I'm anointed to do everything that God wants me to do. I'm anointed right now to even prophesy on behalf of others that this glory begins to come in my life as never before. I'm telling you, church, he's taken us higher and further. And it's not based on numbers. It's based on the heart of God right now. It's based on the heart of God. And even as I just really, I want to finish this, but let's look at the proverb. A uh, proverb comes from previous generations who are passing on their witness, their wisdom. When we think of proverbs in the Bible, it's just the proverbs are primarily by Solomon, and really he's passing on the wisdom that he's learned. And so, even in here, it's going to be that the older generation need to pass on the wisdom to the younger generation because they always use the mothers used to sit down with daughters and explain to them about right life and what it was all about. That wisdom and even fathers and grandfathers talking to young men, talking to them about right now God and all God entails. I'm telling you what, it's coming a time now when we're going to need the fathers to speak. We're going to need the mothers to speak. We're going to need all of us to speak so that God gets the glory even in our younger people right now. Glory. Hallelujah. So the explanation for the scene of dry bones is explained by the Proverbs which evidently was a popular song about them. See, when they were saying the Proverbs and their proverb, they were singing a proverb of hopelessness. That because the bones were dry and very dry, and they had been taken to various uh, different places by Babylon, and they were taken to there, and they were taken out of the place that they were, they were taken to places where they were enslaved, and they saw no hope. But here is God telling Ezekiel as he gathers him together in a dream and transports him right now to the valley of dry bone. God begins to say, listen, even though they're scattered and even though we don't know where some of them are, I'm going to bring them all together. I want you to know whether you're in here or out there on the street. Some of you don't know where your sons or daughters are, but they're coming back right now and they're coming back home. God is going to make the dry bone right now begin to come together and he's going to come together right now with the dry bone and then he's going to put sinews on them to connect the bone and then he's going to put skin on them right now in the name of Jesus that calls right now his glory to be revealed and to identify him with who God is and he's going to put the muscle on them right now where they can come back strong in the name of Jesus and he's going to do it not only for them he's going to do it for you. Some of you have been wondering right now, when will my child turn right? When will my child come back to God? When will the spirit of addiction be broken? When will right now, in the name of Jesus, you put my life back together? But God is saying, if you'll prophesy right now, you'll prophesy to your situation. You'll prophesy right now to what you believe God is doing. You'll prophesy what he said prophesy. You will begin to say and do and be who he has made you to be. It is God right now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus and God doesn't want us to be pessimistic. As we go to number five right now in the name of Jesus, the prospect, the possibility of a likelihood of some future event occurring. There was restoration. And restoration is the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. He says, oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into a land of Israel. Though they appear dead, the Israelites will be raised from their graves. Listen, I'm letting you know now, 
that God is beginning to raise some stuff out of the grave right now. Yeah. Some stuff you buried right now yeah. that shouldn't have been buried. Some stuff that some other people buried and listen here, they shouldn't have buried because it belonged to you. I tell you what, I believe that God is going to cause inheritances to come. He's going to cause stuff that you thought you lost to all of a sudden begin to arrive and he's going to call as you call it up. There were some things that happened that you should have right now been rewarded off of but you weren't and God is going to cause you to prophesy to that as he begins to cause the dreams to rise up in you again begin to say that belongs to me and it belongs to me now. I, I said it belongs to me now, yes. right now, the name of you, and I call it forth right now. People are saying that it won't happen. They're tired of me talking about it, but right now, the name of Jesus, I believe that it's on its way now in Jesus' name because of who God is. Yes. And I thank God that it's coming. And then there's revival. It's going to be an improvement of strength and condition. We're going to see strength right now, even go forth in the name of Jesus. Jesus and strength come forth. We got people out there right now. We speak right now to down and Mary. We speak to the strength right now that do them that the strength of God comes to them now. We speak right now in the name of Jesus to everyone that has a need right now in the name of Jesus that we're going to see the glory of God even Lord come forth in Jesus name. But the most thing I want you to know you need to speak life right now. Somebody need to speak life right now in the name of Jesus to your finances in the name of Jesus. Then begin to speak life right now in the name of Jesus. That the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous and you're walking in divine overflow. You're not walking in just enough. You're walking in more than enough in Jesus' name. Somebody need to prophesy to their health right now in the name of Jesus. That by Jesus stripes you were healed right now. Somebody need to prophesy right now to your family right now in the the name of Jesus that the prodigals and the backsliders are coming right now to God as never before and Lord we need to prophesy right now to our spirit right now and not grieve the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus name it is the power of God right now that we're going to experience as never before and God is going to be glorified I said God is going to be glorified I said God is going to be glorified in everything that's going on right now I said, God is going to be glorified. I can't, 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 can't tell you enough. It seems sometimes like we are the pump and prime of people, but I'm not saying it because of you. I'm saying it because of me. I need a hope right now that's more than just what I've seen. I need a hope right now that's based on Jesus Christ right now in Jesus' name. And I've got to speak life when death seems imminent. I've got to speak life when impossibilities are seen the only possibilities. I've got to speak life right now when there's no song in my heart. Yes, yes. All I can do is sing yeah. out of an empty heart right now in the name of Jesus. i got to speak life right now when I don't even know where some of my children are. Not just geographically, but spiritually in the name of Jesus. But there's something I must do right now. I've got to speak life. Even when one of my loved ones pass away. And if they're in Christ, I can rejoice in the Lord because they're with him. But if they didn't die in Christ, then what I'd better do is make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else. I've got to speak life to everyone else right now that I know. I won't let another Lord right now loved one die without me saying a word to them. And don't let us get so that we go around and we are so weeping for those who have died outside of Christ when we refuse to say a word while they were here. I'm letting you know the Holy Ghost is grieved with us not telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're tired of it right now, get more tired because not one of your friends, not one of your loved ones should go out of here without you telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ in your business, in your home, wherever they are, they should know about Jesus as Lord right now. 
Glory, hallelujah. It's time right now to prophesy. But it's time to weep at the same time. It's time to weep between the porch and the altar. And we've gotten so selfish right now in the name of Jesus that we're concerned about our time more than anything. And we're judging right now the word of God rather than receiving the word of God. And God is saying right now, it's time for us to arise in the love of God as never before. He's tired of us sitting down and we're weeping over our own little issues. When there's a whole world dying out there for Christ right now. And you said, Pastor, why are you getting so loud? Because the end is coming and the end is near. And if we don't prepare for what God is about to do, we are going to lose people that we should have gained. Why is our mouth shut up? Why is our mouth shut up right now? When they're lost right now, we've got drinking buddies. We've got partying buddies. We've got right now business buddies. And we won't tell them about the Lord. And God is saying, when will I matter more than your situation and your fear? When will I get the glory out of your life right now? This place should be full right now. We start witnessing to those that we should witness to. And it's time to make a change. I speak life right now. I speak life over everyone under the sound of my voice. And I decree that you're going to speak a lot too. Father, we thank you. Lord, we repent in dust and ash. We repent, God. We repent of being a nest of against your witness. Lord, we thank you Jesus, that the 
Lord, put a weight on our hearts for him. Lord, I decree that you put a weight on our hearts for you that won't be lifted by entertainment or food or things or people. We give you glory. Special prayer for my brother Toby in the name of Jesus that you would bless, keep, and encourage him. Now the same blessings over everyone under the sound of my voice. Everything that we need is in you. And Lord, we decree that we will speak life. We will speak Christ in every instance of our lives. And families and cities and nations. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you to our Facebook family. We love and appreciate you. And we ask that you join us again. You can contribute by giving to our cash out, dollar sign, pay how be it. And we give glory to God. Thank you so very much. Let's give God a hand.